Let's talk about one of the most underrated features of whiskey, and that is mouthfeel. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch, and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So today I am starting a little series here on the different features of whiskey. A couple weeks ago I did a video on the age of whiskey and how much that plays a role, in my opinion, in the overall whiskey experience. And I wanted to continue that trend and start to break down some of the other features of what goes into making a great whiskey experience overall. My mind immediately went to what I would consider the most underrated or least talked about feature that can really play a major role in how great a whiskey experience is when you're sitting there sipping on it. And for me, that is mouthfeel. Now, this is admittedly kind of a term that more of the whiskey nerd, whiskey geek community uses to talk about their sipping experience. It certainly translates over from uh, a lot of the wine industry where they talk a lot about mouthfeel, but it's equally, if not more so, applicable to whiskey. Again, admittedly, it does sound a little bit pretentious when you start talking about things like mouthfeel, but if you really think about it, mouthfeel is basically just defined as the physical sensation you have when you're tasting a food or a drink. For anything that you ever consume, that's gonna actually play a major role in your experience of it. Is it soft and gushy? Is it buttery and smooth? Is it firm and rough? Like that texture, which is really what mouthfeel is about, is texture in your mouth plays a major role in your experience of any food. And here's where it really translates over to whiskey. Whiskeys are made of different grains and mash bills, which are gonna contribute to different mouthfeels. They are left in the barrel for a certain amount of time and certain sugars can get in there, wood sugars that create a different mouthfeel. And then most importantly, the proof and whether or not a whiskey is chill filtered is going to play a major role in what it feels like in your mouth. Mouthfeel is such an important part of tasting anything that they actually have like mouthfeel wheels to help you describe what you're tasting. I think I'll try to put one up here somewhere. And basically, this is a major feature of whiskey that I think if you learn to talk about and think about as you're experiencing the whiskey, you'll start to pick up on how much of a factor that plays in what you're tasting and whether or not you like it. So the best way I knew how to sort of demonstrate that for you guys is with a little blind matchup. So today we've got two products from Wild Turkey Distillery. We've got the Russell's Reserve Single Barrel and the Wild Turkey Long Branch. Both of these have the same mash bill. So they're not exactly one-to-one -one comparisons, but that at least levels the playing field. The long branch is 86 proof, so way down in proof, and is chill filtered, but it is run through uh, mesquite wood, so it has a slightly different flavor profile. But the Russell's Reserve is 110 proof, so much higher proof, and non-chill filtered. So just to pause there for a second, non-chill filtration is a term that you'll see on different whiskey bottles. You can assume for most whiskeys that they are chill filtered in some way, especially if they're lower proof. Essentially, um, that removes some of the impurities. For instance, if this long branch was not chill filtered, you might even see little floaty specks in there since it's so low proof. But at higher proofs, like this 110 for the Russell's Reserve, you can get away with non-chill filtration, which doesn't strip away some of the impurities, but also leaves more of like the fatty acid esters and things like that that contribute to a more robust and thick mouthfeel. So whenever you see non-chill filtered, just think that that's probably gonna be a thicker, more robust experience in your mouth. So I've set these two glasses up. I don't know which is which. I have a little white mark on the bottom of the one that is the Russell's Reserve, mm -hmm. but I wanna taste test these side by side with a particular focus in mind for mouthfeel and see how much that is determining the experience and how noticeable that is. Before we dive in here, do just wanna ask that if you're liking the video and you're liking all the content coming out of the channel, please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I've got the goal now to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2022. We're getting up there, we're over 400 now. And once we get to that point, I will uh, be doing a fun giveaway. So really excited about that. Anyway, let us get into this little matchup here. So on the nose, it's not gonna do much of a difference. So I'm not gonna really focus on that. In fact, I don't want the nose to really give it away. So I'm just gonna go straight in here and we'll call this one in my hand, the left glass, glass A. Cheers, everybody. All 
I barely have to pause for that because it's a super quick experience. Tasted pretty much like water in the mouth. Water with some spice and good orange zest flavor, which makes me think it's the long branch, but a very thin um, experience overall. Good flavor punch. That doesn't mean it doesn't have good flavor. It just, it kind of rolled over my palate and then disappeared relatively quickly. Leave some lingering sweetness, but in the mouth, it just felt more like drinking water than anything else. There wasn't like a coating on my tongue or on the, on the sides of my cheeks or anything like that. Let's go into glass B here. Cheers. Mm. Okay. So just by merit of the fact that that experience took me a good 10, 15 seconds to walk through in my head, much more robust, more buttery, just more heft to it. It feels heavier in the mouth to me. It's not quite like drinking water. It's like drinking water infused with something thicker, like melted butter or something like that. It's got this round feeling. I can feel it on the side of my cheeks, sort of sticking there. The roof of my uh, mouth is, you know, coated with a little extra something now that it's gone. And as it sticks around, that spice and that sweetness linger because of that coating experience that I had while swishing it around and then swallowing it in my mouth. Sorry, I'm saying a lot of gross terms because we're talking about mouthfeel today, but again, it's a really pivotal thing. And both of these have really good flavor. I want to say that I like the long branch. I'm pretty convinced it's glass A there, but um, I like the long branch quite a bit. It gives good flavor. It's just like drinking flavored water. There's still good punch there, but the experience is shorter and thinner with the second glass which i'm pretty convinced is the russell's reserve because you can tell just how big a difference mouthfeel makes it's just a much more robust rich experience there's a lot of terms people throw out when it comes to mouthfeel some of the most popular would be like thick uh heavy robust chewy is a big one when it comes to bourbon almost like i can chew on it like it's got some leather or tobacco in there that i can chew on and really sink my teeth into buttery. And then of course you've got terms like smooth. So smooth is an interesting one because for a lot of people, a more robust punch you in the face mouthfeel might not feel as smooth as a watery, thinner experience. But overall that buttery smooth quality is something you get with a thicker mouthfeel. And often the thinner mouthfeel can contribute to a sense that there's some jagged edges or a little bit tinny or flat for certain whiskeys. Actually, I'm just gonna pause here for a second and put up a graphic that just shows some descriptors that commonly go with a thinner mouthfeel and some that go with a thicker mouthfeel. Anyway, let's go back in just for one more sip here, experience these two glasses. We'll go in the reverse order in case that messed anything up and we'll go with glass B first. Cheers, everybody. Man, it just, it clings to the tongue it sits in your mouth for longer. Like I feel like I could hold that in my mouth and it has substance to it. The flavors develop more slowly and more powerfully overall. I can taste it again on the roof of my mouth, the side of my cheeks. It just contributes to this sensation that you're having a hefty, punchy, flavorful experience. I really do think that mouthfeel, if it doesn't just contribute to the immediate punch of flavors, which it can, it mostly contributes to the overall blooming of a whiskey, how much it lingers, and finish. Finish is going to be pretty much directly correlated to mouthfeel in a lot of cases because when it doesn't cling to your mouth, you're not going to have as long a finish. When it does have that cloying effect, the finish is often going to be something you're going to rate highly and think is really spectacular. Okay, let's go back to glass A one more time. Cheers, everybody. Man, going back that way, it's just even more noticeable. It's like drinking water again. It's so, it's so much thinner. There's good flavors. There's good orange zest. There's good spice there. But I swish that around a good amount in my mouth and almost none of it stuck to the roof of my mouth or the side of my cheeks. It washes away pretty quickly. Again, I don't want to knock 
whatever glass A is. I'm pretty sure it's the Long Branch. I don't want to knock it because there's good flavors and it's a very easy to sip experience. Almost like I want to go right back in and just take another sip. Whereas glass B, I would take a sip of that, wait a, a minute or two, go back for another sip because I feel like it's still just lingering and developing in my mouth. Two different experiences. If I'm right, the glass B is the Russell's Reserve. It's a much more intense experience too. Mouthfeel can contribute to the feeling of intensity of a whiskey. Like how much is it overtaking your palate versus uh, what I think is glass A, the long branch, is just lending itself to this easy sipping, relaxed, you don't have to think about it too much experience, which is great for like a summer night over a block of ice even would taste more, even more watered down and sort of a, a really refreshing experience. It's not quite as intense. So as we can tell from this little experiment, I think mouthfeel contributes significantly to the experience of whiskey. If I had to give a winner here, I would 100% give it to glass B. And especially with that focus on mouthfeel, you can see how much it elevates the experience to what we typically call a really exceptional great whiskey. Let's go ahead and take a look and make sure I was right in all of my guessing here. Yep, glass B here is the Russell's Reserve. Glass A is the Long Branch. And man, it's just a tale of two cities when it comes to mouthfeel here. All right, not to beat a dead horse here, but to recap quickly, I think that it's true. Mouthfeel is a major component in the experience you have of whiskey. It's going to majorly affect how the whiskey tastes literally to you, the amount of flavor that might stick on your palate. It's going to be a major component in how you describe whiskey and how a whiskey presents itself to you. And it's going to be a major component in whether or not a whiskey can reach that sort of elevated, really, really great whiskey status. And like I said at the start, I really do feel that mouthfeel is one of the more underrated features of whiskey, uh, maybe because it's got that pretentious side to it that people associate with it. But for everybody, even me, somebody who's only been doing this for a year and a half, if you can learn to think about and talk about and evaluate mouthfeel, It'll just add one more dimension to your understanding of whiskey and what's really impacting your experience of different bourbons, whiskeys, ryes, you name it. All right, everybody, I think that about wraps up everything I have to say on the topic of mouthfeel today, another feature of whiskey. Stay tuned for other videos in this series where we'll break down the other essential features of your whiskey experience. Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey. Hopefully it's got great mouthfeel and Cheers.